Howdy folks, Jake here with Banjo Ben again, and today we got another tech tip for you. We're gonna do a fairly simple one uh, concerning just setting the intonation of your bridge on your banjo. Now, a mandolin would be similar in theory, although I think I'll probably do a separate video showing you a little more specifics uh, with a mandolin. There's a few more things to consider. So just uh, consider this for the banjo this time. Uh, what I have here is a Recording King, RK35 and we're gonna need to set the bridge on it. Now, what I like to do before I set the bridge, obviously, if you get these out of the box, uh, they come, the bridge is down on them, and the strings are you know, tightened down on top of it, so you gotta kinda loosen the strings and stand them up. Uh, but a lot of people don't know, like from there, where do you go? Um, if you're doing a pro setup, you really want to have your head adjusted properly first. I've got it set at about an even 90 pounds everywhere using our drum dial. And I've got another video on that if you need to refer to that. Uh, but once, once your banjo's kind of set up the way you want it, uh, generally speaking, uh, we can kind of set the bridge. Now, from a mathematical perspective, you want the distance from the nut to the 12th fret which is just barely over 13 inches, you want that to equal from that same 12th fret to the bridge, generally speaking. The best way to do it though is purely by matching the harmonic at the 12th fret with the note at the 12th fret. Uh, that's how you're gonna get the closest to your ear. So I've intentionally set this one up sharp right now to demonstrate what it sounds like when that's not the case. So if I chime it here, and then I note it. You hear how much higher the note is than the chime, right? So what we need to do, when the note's sharp, that means the bridge is too close to the uh, nut. It needs, you need to create more distance and lengthen the scale. So on a banjo, you can literally just take it and slide it backwards uh, because there's not a lot of tension on those strings. You could just kind of move it as it sets there. And I'm just kind of taking a guess here. I'm guessing maybe somewhere in there might be a good spot. And then we'll check that again. And when, when you move it also, you want to keep your center string running right down the center of your inlay. If you see this dot here, let me move in. And from that angle, you may not be able to tell. You have to kind of look right over it. But uh, you want your middle string to run right up the middle of your inlay pattern. So when you move it back, you might shift it to one side or the other. Uh, just make sure that's straight before you check it again. And you may have to retune. You always want to make sure it's in tune when you're setting the intonation. So now we'll check it again. I'll hit that chime, then I'll note it. Still sharp, so we're gonna go back a little farther. Kind of back in that range. And we're getting close. Still just a sco sharp though. I'm gonna go back just a little bit. It's just kind of a trial and error process. Like I said, if you measure, you can get a lot closer from the beginning. Now we're getting in the ballpark. So if the, uh, and you can see where the manufacturer's lines were on the head, they were even way sharp. Uh, compared to where it should be. So you can't always trust if there's pencil marks uh, because over time the banjo is going to change and the setup's going to change. And if the neck angle changes or if you got to adjust the coordinator rods or anything like that over the years, uh, your, your, uh, your bridge placement is going to need to be fluid. It's not going to be exactly to the lines. Uh, even if I set it with lines right now and it was perfect, it wouldn't be exact. So... Now another thing, when you get it, um, when you get it pretty much where it goes, um, when you do that chime, 
your notes will come to life in the uh, the notes that are tonal to G. So like you can literally just hit it, then let off and you'll hear that sustain, listen. Oops. You just hear it keeps ringing. You hear those notes, uh, big, fat, and warm. Now the last thing that I might show you, if you're dealing with a, a high-end type bridge, they're actually, I get this question a lot, they're cut to look like they're leaning toward the tailpiece. And what this does is it counteracts that forward pressure, you know, from the tailpiece pushing on the, the bridge. So this bridge, the angle's straight here and is cut at a slight slant this way. That's normal. You want that. So anyway, uh, hopefully that gets your bridge pretty close. Uh, that can make a big difference. If your bridge is even a quarter inch off, you're losing a lot of sustain that your banjo is capable of. So I hope you found that useful. And as always, we appreciate you watching. Thanks, folks.